It's been a long time coming, but Gran Turismo 5 is finally here. Polyphony Digital's latest real driving simulator brings a number of new features to the series, but it also recycles a lot of content. This is undoubtedly the biggest and best Gran Turismo yet, but aspects of both the gameplay and the visuals evoke deja vu. If you love to drive, Gran Turismo 5 is a game that you're sure to enjoy, just don't expect it to have that new car smell. GT5 doesn't make a good first impression. There are lengthy load and stall times, the menus are unwieldy, and most of the cars you encounter early in the GT Life career mode look really rough. They're supposed to be used cars, but they don't look rough because they have faded paintwork, rust spots, or bumpers that have clearly seen some action. They just look rough because, sadly, they look much the same as they did on the PS2. These poorly textured, jaggy-edged standard cars outnumber the vastly superior premium models roughly four to one and there's not even an option to use the new cockpit view when driving them. Fortunately, even the standard cars are a lot of fun to drive, and if you're a newcomer to simulation-style racing games, you'll find that GT5 is very accessible. A number of the game's driving aids are switched on by default, so if you're a veteran of the series, you might want to turn them off, or at least tone some of them down a bit. If you're finding the game too difficult, though, the new Skid Recovery Force option makes things much easier by automatically giving your wheels extra grip when they start to slip. Regardless of your skill level, you do well to complete GT5's license tests, which unlike those in previous games are completely optional. These tests do a great job of familiarizing you with various cornering techniques and the like, and also afford you an opportunity to get a feel for how different types of car handle. It's hard not to be impressed by the realistic handling in GT5. Push these cars too hard and they punish you, which makes it all the more rewarding when you win a race in one. It can be incredibly frustrating to see your chances of winning dashed by a single mistake, but it's almost always because you did something wrong and not because an AI driver crashed into you. Choose to ignore the screeching of your tires, the rumbling of your DualShock controller, or the resistance of your force feedback wheel, and you only have yourself to blame. The GT Life career mode that you'll probably spend most of your time in is comprised of a number of different event types. A-spec races where you drive yourself, and B-spec races where you give instructions to an AI driver place restrictions on what kind of cars can enter them. These restrictions are lax enough that you can win just by using the best car on the grid for the most part, but they do get very challenging towards the end when that's rarely an option. As you complete events, you earn experience points towards your next level, and as you gain levels, you unlock additional events and the right to drive more powerful cars. Oddly, and disappointingly, you also need to level up before vehicle damage becomes anything more than superficial. Because of this, there's a chance that you might beat the entire GT Life mode without ever seeing a car get really beaten up, even if you go out of your way to crash at high speeds. One of the best features of GT Life Mode is the Special Events category, where you can find kart races, rally challenges, and races around the Top Gear test track, to name just a few. These challenges are some of the best that GT5 has to offer, in part because you don't get to beat them cheaply using overpowered cars. NASCAR challenges are another highlight of Special Events, and they do a great job of preparing you for the oval races and NASCAR series that unlock toward the end of your career. Outside of GT Life, there's an arcade mode where you can set up custom races at any time and where you can play split screen with a friend. The best way to compete against other players, though, is online, where up to 16 of you can race simultaneously. There's no noticeable lag in online races, and GT5 smartly deals with anyone who thinks it's hilarious to drive backwards or park their car across the track by making them translucent and possible for others to pass through. Furthermore, as the host of an online session, you have numerous options with which to customize your races, including a really good one that temporarily reduces power to the engines of anyone who collides with another racer or a barrier. This option gives everyone a great incentive to race properly, which makes online sessions a lot more fun. 
The only major weakness of GT5's online offering is that it's not nearly as easy as it should be to find sessions that you want to join. There's no automatic matchmaking whatsoever, so the only way to find a game is to pull up a list of lobbies that aren't already full and choose one. There's not even a good way to filter your search by, for example, the maximum power or level of the cars being used. The only filters you get are the course being raced, the region that the host is playing in, and whether use of the skid recovery force option has been disallowed. Worse still, the only system in place for inviting friends to sessions that you're playing in is to send them a 20-digit code that they then have to type in. There are some real gems amongst the thousand plus cars on the roster, though for everyone that's exciting there are several that might make you wonder why they're even included. You can try to ignore cars that you have no interest in, of course, just as you can do your best to drive only premium vehicles. But less desirable and standard rides are everywhere. Even if you avoid buying them, you end up racing against them. It's not just the standard cars that disappoint visually. Many of the tracks in the game are also recognizable from earlier games. And while they clearly look a lot better in GT5, they're still not up to the standards being set elsewhere in the genre. Clearly, Gran Turismo 5 has its fair share of problems. But if you've ever fantasized about a Ferrari or dreamt of driving at Daytona, Gran Turismo 5 is a game that you're sure to get a lot out of. This is simultaneously the most accessible Gran Turismo game yet, and the most uncompromisingly realistic driving game on a console to date. It's unfortunate that much of what makes Gran Turismo 5 so great is under the hood, rather than on display for everyone to see. But if forced to choose, a powerful engine trumps a perfect paint job every time. For more in-depth coverage of Gran Turismo 5, be sure to check out our written review.